Hey guys, Devin Fish Tank Projects. Uh, just a little video on the kind of ins and outs of a calcium reactor. Paul, in one of the comments one of my previous reef updates, was asking about it, so I promised I'd make a video, so here it is. Now, essentially, how it works is with the calcium reactor, all these rocks inside, this coarse meat is essentially dead coral skeleton. And now, your current tank usually has a pH of the higher 7.8 to 8.3 type of now, when you drop the pH below 7, it turns the water acidic. And when the water becomes acidic, it'll slowly start dissolving this media. Now, the main benefit of a calcium reactor is you inject CO2, there's my CO2 tank, into this chamber. There's a pump right here, and it recirculates the water through the chamber. And this little line coming into it injects CO2. Uh, and so it slowly makes it acidic and it starts melting it and then after that you drip the the, the water back out which should we call the fluent into the tank and as it dissolves you're essentially dosing the tank calcium and alkalinity from coral skeleton so you're giving the tank and the corals exactly what they need exactly what they're made out of the other kind of benefit is you get a bunch of trace elements with it which normally is a little harder to get with just a regular dosing pump so that really is one of the biggest advantages to it I'd say now, on my, I previously had it set up to run from 6.7 to 6.9. However, I, when I recalibrated my probe, it was came out around 6.4. So I think I might have actually been running a bit lower. So this time I changed my probe, freshly calibrated probe, and now I set up to run from six, a pH of 6.5 to 6.7. Um, so just kind of show you exactly how that works. Okay, so this is your CO2 tank. This is kind of one of the main pieces. On top, you have a regulator. It's a nice little compact one. The gauge on there shows you the, how many pounds of pressure inside your tank. As long as it's above 500-600, you're good. And it will stay there until your tank is low. Now when the CO2 two solenoid comes on, you will see little bubbles coming out of here. And this is called your bubble counter. Uh, let's try and get it to focus. That's called your bubble counter. I also have a second one here just because it's a little easier to read. And I previously had a different regulator on it, so I didn't have one at first. I replaced with this guy since it's a DC one. Uh, focus. So it's DC instead of AC, and supposedly they're less likely to stick, which is something that could happen. So, now if you do want to set up a calcium reactor, I'd strongly advise using a pH controller, as it'll make your life much, much easier. On this, I drilled a hole in the top. Let's see if I can get the phone in there. So I drilled a hole in the top and I used one of those little electrical conduit connectors. It was a very tight fit. As you can see on the probe, I kind of broke one of those little edges off and kind of super glued it. Apparently it didn't end up straight. And controlling it through pH will make your life heaps better. It'll, it'll make it so much easier. Um, so when I'm on the apex, I say if the pH drops below, or if, it, if it's above 6.7, turn on the CO2. So once it's, it will slowly rise to 6.7, the solenoid will turn on and it will start injecting CO2 into the reactor. And that will lower the pH and as it drops, once it hits 6.5, because if it goes too low, it could potentially melt your medium turn into mush and then it's just a waste. So if it turns too low, then it turns the CO2 off and then it will slowly rise back up again. So it will just cycle slowly up and down. Now ideally you want to fine tune your bubble rate um, on this particular CO2 solenoid, that little right there, there's a little screw, and I, I'd use that to fine tune the bubble count. And you can find the perfect balance where your solenoid will stay on for days, and it's just that perfect amount. I mean, ideally you can do it without the solenoid by doing that, but it's a lot easier and kind of a safety net to have that pH probe in. It makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Now a few tweaks that I did to the calcium reactor is previously, it would drip out the top of the tank and it would drip straight into the tank. Now, for some reason, I've been trying to up my pH. It's this little battle I decided to go on. So I added a second chamber to my calcium reactor. Now, this one is full of really tiny crushed coral skeleton. This almost looks like a sand bed material, but bigger. Now, the output of this goes... So you don't have to have this, but this will give you a little more benefit out of your effluent. And again, the fluents, which you call the liquid that comes out of it, which is your water with more acidic water coming out with dissolved nutrients in it from dissolving the coral skeleton. So it's, we'll check in here, and now the water, there's a little tube here, so it feeds, 
into the bottom of the reactor and has to trickle all the way up through that media. As it trickles up, that media is going to dissolve a little bit more and use up more of the CO2, which will up the pH of the water. Now, once it goes to the top, you can kind of see, but it just overflows out this one, and I have it going to a drip cup. Now, the purpose of this is to further up the pH of it. Now, there's a little needle valve on the end. You can see it's slowly dripping out. And so, again, these are all potential add-ons I just did to help raise the pH of, of the fluent that I'm dripping into the tank. Um, this one is just a nair stone. This is one of the lime wood, I think it is, just like a little wooden nair stone. And injecting air also helps get the CO2 out of there. So again, none of these are required, but it will help raise the pH of your tank. Previously, just out of the calcium reactor, I believe it was around 6 or just over 6, the pH of the fluent. Since I added this stuff in, it's just over 7, so it raised almost a full point from adding that second chamber, the drip cup, and the air stone. The air stone really did make the biggest difference, so if you do want to save yourself some money and skip some of that. So that's essentially how the calcium reactor works. If you have any questions or want clarification, let me know. And if you are going to set one, I would strongly recommend using a pH controller as it makes it extremely easy to set up. Um, oh, one other thing to add. It gets the water from usually a feed pump. I have my little reactor manifold which uses a JBO DC pump and comes up here and this feeds a bunch of my reactors. So there's calcium, uh, GFO when it's turned on. This one's for my little auto feeder, which I'll do another video on shortly. And this one feeds the calcium reactor. So in, it's forcing tank water into here. Um, this half is a check valve, or two check valves actually. And that forces CO2. So this is the pump intake. Your f water's being pushed in. And same with CO2. And it recirculates in the reactor. And then it comes out the top and it slowly drips out. So that's kind of the basis of it. If you have any questions on how to set it up or anything specific, leave a comment below and let me know. For other great tutorials, be sure to like and subscribe my YouTube channel and check out my site at fishtankprojects.com. Cheers.